Hi and welcome to Fun Swedish. The Swedish accent is quite unique because it has a rare pitch accent and a large number of vowels, vocaler, a, o, u, o, e, i, i, a, ö. All these things combined makes it sound like we are singing when we talk. Today I will go through some things that are good to know if you want to sound like a Swede. Like most countries, there are different dialects and that's the same here in Sweden, which means that there are different ways to sound Swedish. But since I'm from Stockholm, this video will focus more on the Stockholm accent and what is also known as the East Central way of talking. So, how to sound like a Swede? Number one, learn the Swedish vowels to perfection. Like we said before, the Swedish vowels are A, O, U, O, E, I, I, A, Ö. And remember to pronounce the Swedish vowel the Swedish way, because our A, A, is nothing like the English A, okay? You can check out this video that we made before if you want to know more details on how to pronounce the Swedish A. But again, if you want to speak like a Swede, then you need to master the Swedish vowels and how they are pronounced by heart. So repeat after me. A. And here it's very important to put down your jaw when you say it. A. It kind of is a little bit like you're seeing a cute puppy and you're saying A, something like that. A. Ooh. And when you say this vowel, it's very important that you do the O, a little circle with your lips. Ooh. 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 It's a little bit like you're saying you, kind of, maybe a bit softer, but maybe that will help you. Ooh. Ooh. Here it sounds a bit like you're a bit surprised. Ooh. And this O is our own letter. It's basically an A with an O on the top. Ooh. E. And here you kind of need to show your teeth when you do this. E. E. This is this kind of nasal sound we make. You kind of need to think that you're doing something like this. E. It kind of works a little bit like the English E. Something like that, but more like E. I kind of put my tongue here when I say it. E. E. Then we have come to the duck face sound. E. When you say E, you kind of need to do a duck face. It's like you're saying E, but you need to put out your lips when you say this vowel. E. Ah. Here it sounds like you're opening your mouth to the doctor. Ah. And this is basically an A with two dots or two circles on the top. Ah. Our last vowel. Uh. Here you need to think that you are an unsophisticated Viking screaming for some beers. Uh. Or this cat. So, in order to master the Swedish vowels, it's important to know that A is not the same thing as A or O. Those little dots there on the top makes it a completely different letter, sound and vowel. Same thing with Ö is not the same thing as the O. And why it's so important to not mix up these vowels is because if you do, the Swede will know right away that your Swedish is not native. And what is even worse, it can sometimes also lead up to some confusion. For example, har, had. Har means have or has. It's basically the same in Swedish. Had, on the other hand, means here. To forget these little dots on the top or add these little dots is a very common mistake, actually. But it's good to learn this because this is a way that the Swede would know right away that your Swedish is not native. Another example, or years. Ar, I am. Ar is a way to measure things. So you see, just by changing these little dots on the top, adding one, adding two or none, makes them completely different words. A very common mistake to do when you want to present yourself is to say jag ar instead of jag är. Hopefully the Swede will be able to understand what you mean, but when you say jag ar, Daniela, for example, instead of jag är, Daniela, then it sounds like you're saying I, and then this way of measuring things, Daniela. It's a little bit weird. This is why it's so important to not be sloppy with the vowels. You need to say är when it's är and ar when it's ar. More examples. För, which is a preposition that can mean all these things. For is an old way of saying she, he or it left. You see? Very important to not mix these up. 
för, för. As you can see, it's super important to focus on the Swedish vowels and get them right. And this is why we focus a lot on these things in our Swedish courses. We make the students practice this a lot so they get the perfect Swedish pronunciation in the end. Actually, many of our students stress about using N and ET right. Even if it's good to know this, it's not as important as getting the vowels right. Because normally Swedes will be able to understand you even if you mix up N and ET. However, if you mix up the vowels, it will for sure lead to some misunderstandings, like we mentioned before. Moving on, number two, the Swedish vowels actually have more than one sound. Now, I don't want to scare you, but things will actually get even more complicated with the Swedish vowels. And you need to get this right as well in order to speak like a Swede. Do you remember that I showed you that Swedish has nine vowels? Well, you can actually say that there are 18 Swedish vowels. At least it sounds like this, because the Swedish vowels have more than one sound, normally two sounds. Let's get into that now. You could say that the Swedish vowels have a long and a short sound. Let's explain this by using the vowel A. The first A sound is pronounced just like we say in the Swedish alphabet, A. This is the long version and you can hear it in words such as glas, bra, ja. But then you can also hear a shorter version, more of a a. Ah. For example, in the words glas, papper, vatten. The general rule is that the a sounds long when it's followed by just one consonant. Like in the word glas. Can you see here? Just one consonant, the s comes after the A. The A also has a tendency to sound longer if it is in the end of a word, like for example, bra and ja. But then it becomes shorter if it's followed by two consonants, like in the examples glass, papper, vatten. This rule with the long and the short vowel sounds happens with all the Swedish vowels. Here are some examples. Glas, glass, bok, Hus, buss. År, åtta. El, ett. Fika, ficka. Fyra, fyrti. Päron, äpple. Öl, östra. But keep in mind that we always have some exceptions to these rules. Words that don't follow the normal rule. Normally, the exceptions happen when it's a borrowed word a word that Swedish took from another language. For example, the word ananas. This should be pronounced like ananas, but it's not because it's a borrow word. So we just keep it like it is. And it will break the normal Swedish rule. Ananas, I mean, it's an exotic fruit. We don't have this in Sweden. However, even if there are exceptions, I still think strongly that you should learn this general rule because it will help your pronunciation a lot. Then you just need to write down the exceptions and learn them by heart. Number three, if you want to sound really Swedish and have a singing song in melody, then you need to nail the Swedish pitch accent. And you could divide the Swedish pitch accent in two different accents. The acute accent, I think it's called like this, and the grave accent. The acute accent is the normal one and it means that when we say a word, we put the stress in the first syllable. It looks a bit like this. Up och ner. Like in this word. Saken. Saken. The thing. And for those who doesn't know what a syllable is, then you can say that it's a way of dividing words in small pieces where there's always a vowel in every piece. It also helps to clap in order to find out how many syllables or vowels there is in a word. For example, my name, Daniela, has four syllables. Daniela. That will help you to know this. So back again to the acute accent. Words with this have the stress in the first syllable like we said. Like in these words. Anden. Tomten. Ordet. Kommer. And in general, most words work like this in Swedish. But then we also have some words with a grave accent, which is kind of a double peak accent, which means that the word goes up in the beginning, then it goes down, 
and it goes up again. Up, ner, up. Like you can see in these words. Anden, tomten, pojke, katter, rolig. The tricky question is, how do you know when you should do the first or the second accent? Like most languages, there are more tendencies than actual rules, since there are many exceptions. So normally you should do the acute accent, the accent that goes up and then down, in words that have only one syllable, basically just one clap, such as cat, foot, hund. You can also find this accent in adjectives ending with isk, for example, magisk. Also in words with two syllables that have a very weird ending, basically an ending that is not very common in Swedish. Words like humus, this us ending is not very common in Swedish. And also the word godis. Godis is kind of a slang for god saker, and there are of course more tendencies for this group, but we're gonna stop here. Maybe if I get more than 500 likes, I could do a part two and dig deeper into this. And then finally, you can hear the grave accent, the accent that goes up, down, up, in words with two syllables with typical Swedish ending, such as pojke, rolig, and also in compound words, two words put together, such as lastbil, sjukhus, brandman. And also in this group, we have more tendencies and of course some exceptions, but we stop here so we can continue this video and talk more about how you can sound like a Swede. Number four, many Swedish words are not pronounced as how they are written. And this is important to know, especially in spoken Swedish, if you want to sound like a real Swede. For example, the word någonting. This is how we write it, but it's very rare to hear this. We normally just say någonting. Also, the word de is normally pronounced as dom. So most Swedes would say dom äter pasta more than de äter pasta. But again, there can be some dialectal differences as well here. Same thing with the word dem. Most people would just say dom to this word as well. For example, pastan äter människorna. Pastan äter dom. So remember, dom 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 for both de and dem. At least if you want to sound really Swedish. Another example is this word. It's written like this, concert. But the most common way to say it, at least here in Stockholm, is konsär. So as you can see, it's not written the same way as how it is pronounced. Swedish is perhaps not as crazy as French, which I think don't say most of the words they write, but Swedish is not so far away either. And if you want to know more about how to sound like a real Swede, then you can check out these two videos we made about it before. So keep in mind all these things I mentioned today if you want to sound like a real Swede. Oh, the